From my childhood church, the Wauseon Congregational United Church of Christ in Wauseon, Ohio, where I was baptized, to the church that I serve today as pastor at Emmanuel United Church of Christ in St. Bernard, Ohio, the United Church of Christ has been my church home. The history and indeed the polity of the UCC denomination has helped to shape and mold who I am as a pastor and who many people are as Christians. The identity of the United Church of Christ has been a voice of justice and hope to the world, reflecting the justice and the hope that we see in God, living out the teachings of Jesus, the liberating Christ, and serving our communities with humility and an extravagant welcome that has become paramount to who we are. With the message of justice and unity, there is also no denying the polarizing reception to our identity. While some applaud and even wish to join with us as ministry partners, others would reject our sense of welcome and inclusion. A reality that is not always comfortable to acknowledge, but a major mark where we sit in the wider Christian landscape. Our church can be traced as far back as the Puritan split from the Church of England. These early Reformed Calvinists sought out a new world, both literally and figuratively. The 17th century saw a further reformation toward the congregational principles that sought further separations of the state churches. These Congregationalists even established institutions of education such as Yale and Harvard. The 19th century saw mergers of evangelical Protestant churches who were not necessarily Congregationalists, but joined with the Congregationalists to gain resources. Many of these evangelical Protestant churches were German churches, a heritage that many of our UCC churches today still feel in architecture and in special worship liturgies. In 1931, the Congregational Churches and Christian Churches merged to form the Congregational Christian Church. As Congregationalists, the polity of these churches was formed around the concept of Congregational Autonomy. Each congregation had the freedom to govern and believe through their own Congregational identities rather than through the rule of a higher and Entity. Conversely, in 1934, the Evangelical Synod of North America merged with the Reformed Church in the United States to form the Evangelical and Reformed Church. The Evangelical and Reformed Church represented a more Presbyterian polity, seeking a larger church organization and structure. Author Lewis Gunneman wrote of the differences between these two bodies, saying, The dissimilarities can be defined in an oversimplified way by saying that, in general, congregational Christian people feared authority but respected power in organizational procedures, while evangelical and reformed people were inclined to respect authority and fear the use of unauthorized power. Ultimately, after a decades-long process of debate, conversation, anti-merger committees, and even civil lawsuits? In 1957, from the two denominations of Evangelical and Reformed Churches and the Congregational Christian Churches merged to form the United Church of Christ, despite the differences that the former bodies identified with. The merger birthed a non-creedal denomination. The goal of this new body was faith over power and the journey of spirit over religious control. Today we are a united and uniting people who reject supremacy while collaborating with God for a more equitable world. While our church is non-creedal from within, the pillars of our organizing body is the relationship between autonomy and covenant. Stated another way, our polity finds its life through the tension between individuality and community. We as churches and as people are encouraged to follow our own spiritual journey while doing so with the promise of collaboration with the wider community without the burden of a strong power structure and control. We seek God in the sacraments of baptism and communion. Believing and affirming in all baptisms, we don't look toward the water as a place of division from other belief systems, but rather a unifying outward and visible sign of God's grace. Likewise, the table of communion is practiced as an open invitation in most UCC churches. The Lord's Supper is a time of deep contemplation and remembrance of Christ's sacrifice for the whole of the world. On a personal note, I believe that education and discovery are hallmarks of the UCC identity. We are encouraged to ask questions, to learn more, to have doubts, and thrive as Christians through these freedoms. 
Holy Scripture does not belong to a single authority to be explained to the masses. Rather, Scripture belongs to each of us as autonomous believers. It is through this freedom to pursue faith rather than to consume religion that we have grown denominationally to find a liberating God. Through education, we have left and are leaving behind our echo chambers and find diversity of thought and people. And this is how we find justice, equality, equity, and inclusion as a reflection of God's love through creation. The United Church of Christ has a rich tradition of practicing these reconciling ministries, dating back to 1959 when the Office of Communications Incorporated of the United Church of Christ was born to counter biased and unfair news coverage. This was a needed ministry during the time of the Great Civil Rights Movement, when local television stations would cut out national coverage of the Civil Rights Movement. The denomination saw the ordination of Reverend Dr. William R. Johnson in 1972. Johnson's ordination was the first of an openly gay minister in the history of Christianity. The United Church of Christ would continue to affirm the LGBTQIA community with the ordination of the UCC's first lesbian minister, Reverend Ann Holmes. The United Church of Christ would later form the Open and Affirming Coalition, which aided the pursuit of our inclusive ministry on a congregational level. In 2005, the General Synod of the United Church of Christ passed a resolution supporting and affirming same-gender marriage. The UCC was the first mainline denomination to do so. The United Church of Christ's advocacy of accessible ministries began in 1977 with the formation of the Advisory Committee on the Church and the Handicapped. The denomination officially joined the fight for environmental justice in 1982. In more recent years, the UCC created the Economic Justice Movement in 2014. While the pursuit of these reconciling ministries marks a core identity of the United Church of Christ and has seen some major milestones and successes, the hope of a united and uniting denomination does not come without challenge. There is still room for pruning, growth, and honesty about the state of our efforts. In 2017, for example, our denomination also became the first mainline denomination to see 51% of our ordained clergy identify as women. And yet, only 42% of our churches have a solo or senior female pastor. While the resolution to affirm same-gender marriages happened in 2005, only 34% of our congregations identify as open and affirming 17 years later in 2022. Likewise, the United Church of Christ passed a resolution in 2021 to declare racism as a national public health crisis, but where will we be as a denomination if 17 years from now, like our LGBTQIA plus inclusive ministries, only 34% of our congregations are engaging in anti-racism training and education? Thanks to the work of Reverend Yvonne Delk and others, with the assistance of Reverend Tracy Blackman, it was finally brought forth to national attention in 2022 that those four founding church streams discussed earlier in this video of congregational, Christian, evangelical, and reformed traditions, which merged to form the United Church of Christ, were not alone. In fact, there was a fifth stream that had been overlooked and left unnamed in the Afro-Christian Church. But due to the implicit bias, if not to call forth the potential racism in our denomination's founding, the Afro-Christian Church was deemed an entity to minister to, not with. As such, these 150 churches with 25,000 members integrated with the other four streams only to count the cost of a fading voice. It took our denomination 65 years for the UCC Historical Council to fully recognize the Afro-Christian tradition as the fifth stream of the United Church of Christ. But this is who we are, a denomination made up of perfectly imperfect human beings trying our best to live out the radical teachings of Jesus Christ, to love and affirm everyone, to serve the stranger, to feed the hungry, to seek justice and end oppression, to collaborate with an all-loving creator and a liberating Christ guided by the Holy Spirit, to bring the will of God to earth as it is in heaven. This is the United Church of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Here is the church. Here is the steeple. Open the doors and see all the people. 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 God accepts all the people. All the people. All the people. So do we. The United Church of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. All the people.